Oh hi there, I didn't see you there. My Totoro pencil case got on the way. Uh, this little guy there is what I'm going to show you how to make today. And he's huge, he's as big as my head really, look at that. He's as big as it. But I like big pencil case and you can use it as a clutch if you don't want it to use as a pencil case. Or you can use it as a makeup bag as well. A pencil case with a zipper that was requested a few weeks ago in the comment section below and uh, I'm going to find your name again because I don't remember who asked but thank you very much for requesting it I had much fun making it and I hope you're going to have as much fun as well so you're going to learn how to make to put a zip in a channel like so and it's very simple and once you have put one you will want to put zippers everywhere so Let's get going with the tutorial. So first we are going to put on our zippers and you're going to take your skinny rectangles there and on one of the long edge you will have two little slits. So on your pattern you will have them marked up and all you need to do is cut little slits on your fabric with your scissors and basically it's telling you where the zipper is going. You need a 10 inch zipper for this. So you're going to put the two rectangle right sides together and pin them in place and we are going to sew them along the long edge that has the marking with a 1cm seam allowance. So you're going to sew alongside the edge with a straight stitch. So from the edge to the first marking, your stitch length will be 2.5. When you're going to get at the first marking, you're going to do a reverse stitch to lock your stitch in place and then switch to your stitch length to uh, the longest possible. For me it's number four and sew in between the two markings. This is called a basting stitch. Basically it's a temporary stitch. We are going to unpick that later on. At the other marking you're going to back tack and change the stitch length to 2.5 again until the end. Next you're going to open up your seam and iron it open. Next you're going to take your zipper, turn it that the teeth are facing down and you're going to place it onto the open seam of your zip tag. You're going to make sure that you're going to place the zip in between the markings that you have on either side of your tabs and you're going to match up the teeth of the zipper with the open seam in the middle and all you need to do now is to pin it in place just to keep it secure and you just need to place your pin on the opposite direction of your sewing line. It will make it a lot easier for you to remove your pin while you're sewing. My zipper was a bit too big so I'm going to make sure it's secured properly in between my markings and then I'm going to cut the excess. Next you need to change the foot attachment onto your machine and change it for a zipper foot. So to know if you've put uh, the attachment on the right side, uh, it's just to remember, just think that you have to get the needle close to the teeth of your zipper. So now we are going to sew the zipper on and we are basically going to sew a box around the zipper. So I'm going to start at the end. Uh, away from the tab, that way it's a lot easier and as you can see on the tape there's lots of little lines so I'm going to take one as my guide and that's the one I'm going to watch as I'm going to sew along. So I'm going to start sewing and I'm just going to do like a regular stitch. I'm going to back tack at the beginning to lock my stitch in place and then I'm going to sew alongside the zipper and I'm going to make sure that I remove my pins as I sew along. As you sew and you remove the pins, don't worry about the tape wiggling around. Since you will have sewn one side, it means it's secure in place, so you don't need to, the pins to secure the other side. So as you're reaching the end of your zipper, the pull tab will be more than likely on the way for you. So not to worry, uh, once you're nearly there, you're going to stop stitching and you're going to keep your needle down into your fabric. So this is very important that you keep your needle down. So that way you won't skip a stitch or it won't go away from you. As long as it's down, it's okay, it won't go anywhere. You're going to put your, your press your foot up and then you're going to pull the tab on the other direction. You're going to basically open your zipper a bit until it's free and then you're going to keep on stitching until you reach a bit after the middle tab. 
So now you have sewn just a bit after the middle tab. So all you need to do is leave your needle down. You're going to put your presser foot up and then swirl around your fabric at a 90 degree angle like so. And then you're going to keep on sewing. Make sure that you're matching up the two metal bits of your zipper so everything will match together. And then you're going to sew a straight line across. Just like so. Once you've reached the other side of the zipper, all you need to do is leave your needle down, lift your presser foot up, and then you can swirl your fabric around at a 90 degree angle again, and then you can sew the other side of your zipper. So until you will get to the pull tab again, and then you're going to leave your needle down, lift your presser foot up, and then move the pull tab away from you. So basically you're going to close up the zipper, so it won't be on the way for you anymore. And then you're going to sew until you reach the other end of the zipper. Once that's done, you're going to leave your needle down, put your presser foot up, and then turn around to finish up the box. Once that's done, all you need to do is to back tack at the end to lock your stitch in place, and then you have your zipper made up. So now you have your zipper stitched on, all you need to do is open up the seam line on the other side so we can utilize the zipper really, because there for the moment it's all closed up. And for that we are going to use a seam ripper or an unpick. Uh, careful with these things because they are very sharp and they can cut through fabric like there is no tomorrow, so be careful with these little things. So now you're going to unpick uh, the stitches that are in within the box and make sure that you don't unpick or rip apart the stitch line that you have around the zipper, especially the one on the end. And uh, it's all there is to it really, you just need to uh, cut away those stitches. That's why they were sewn on so loosely to begin with, so it makes it a lot easier to unpick later on. Now that our zip is installed, we can make up the rest of the bag. So you're going to take the piece, the rectangular piece that makes up the bottom of the bag and you're going to place them together, right sides together, just like so, and uh, you're going to pin them together. And we are going to sew on each end on the short side with a one, one centimeter seam allowance. So you should now have a loop. What we are going to do as well is, because it's quite bouncy at the seam, close to the seam line, we are going to do a top stitch. So it's going to keep the seam allowance in place, nice and tidy, just like so. So now we are going to make up the ear, so you should have four ear pieces, and we're going to work with two at a time. So you're going to put them right sides together, and you're going to sew them with a quarter of an inch seam allowance all around the curved edge. You're going to leave open the stretch edge because we need to turn the ear inside out. The one that I have here, I put a bit too much similar, so for you it should be a bit bigger, a bit smaller, sorry. And then what you're going to do is clip all around the curved edge and that's going to help with bulk later on. Once that's done, you can turn your ear inside out and then you can top stitch it so it will lay flat. So you should have a front and a back piece left over and I went ahead and made all the face feature on my Totoro but on the pattern that I'm going to give you, you will have the belly piece but I leave it to you to cut out the whiskers, the nose piece and the eyes and the little design on its belly and I just attached it, I attached the whole thing with a felt stitch on. Next you're going to attach the... So you're going to place the ears face down onto the Totoro and I actually just matched them up with the eyes and I made sure I lined up the straight edge with the top of the face and I make sure that they are facing down because they need to be in the inside when I sew them up because if I put them on the outside they will show on the inside of my pencil case. I'm just going to pin them down in place and baste them in place with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm just attaching them so they won't get away uh, from me when I'm sewing the whole thing up later on. Now it's time to uh, make up the pencil case. So we are going to attach the band to the front first and the front and the back will have on either side 
of them little slits. So these are balanced notches and they are going to be matched with the seam on the side of the bands. So that's basically to uh, balance the whole thing out so you won't have too much fabric on one side and not enough on the other. So it's just to help you out. So pin them first and then you can pin all around. And the next thing to do is to sew it together with a one centimeter seam allowance. If you want to stop your fabric from fraying, you can sew a zigzag stitch all around your seams within your seam allowance and that's going to help with fraying. Then you're going to repeat the same step with the back of the pencil case and make sure that the zip is open before you actually sew it together so you'll be able to turn it right side out. All there is left to do next is to turn it right side out and give it a little press and you're all done! So that's it for today's. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it helpful. As usual, you can leave me your questions or comments or suggestions in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and so on. I'm going to leave all the links in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, why not giving it a thumbs up? And if you want to see more from this channel, why not subscribe as well? And um, yeah. I would love to see your project if you're making anything from this channel so you can send it to me on Facebook or Google Plus or anything at all. I would love to see them and feature them on my channel. Well, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.